we don't want five process analysts, we want 5,000. If process-based management is to be effective and sustained in our organisations, we can't rely on a small central group to do it all. That can't work. The subject matter experts in our processes are those that are executing them all day, every day. They know what's wrong. They have lots of ideas about how to improve and sustain performance. They need to be involved. We need to raise process-based management capabilities across the organisation. Let's explore that a little more. Building capability across the organization? That's not an easy thing to do. Let's find some ways to make it possible. Firstly, when we're talking about capability here in this video and pretty much in everything I do in my work, I just mean the ordinary dictionary definition of the word. It's the ability to do something. So I'm just using that term, the ability to do something. And when I talk about organizational capabilities, I mean it's giving people the experience and the expertise to do the things that we need them to do. If you've seen seven enablers before, you will know that one of those enablers is process capability. Same definition. It's just giving people the ability to participate through their own knowledge and experience in the work of process analysis and management and improvement and measurement to get involved in process based management. So let's think about the sorts of capabilities in those terms that we need in the organization to do effective process based management. And there's quite a few of them, just to list some of them here. We need to be able to discover our processes, we need to be able to model and document them. We need to be able to understand how to measure process performance. So how do we find the right process KPIs and their targets? We have to produce useful reports to be able to analyze lots of data and lots of ideas, new ideas for change. And of course, we've got to improve processes. That's the point of the exercise, isn't it? We've got to deliver change. And we've got to be able to manage processes and manage lots of people and manage ideas, lots of moving parts to manage. We've got to resolve the inevitable challenges and conflicts that, that come our way and we have to provide leadership at all sorts of levels. So it's quite a set of capabilities that we need to be able to develop and sustain if we're going to have this system of management. But we can do it, I'm sure. It's, it, we're, we're well able to rise to that. A particular issue we need to take care of is the sort of language that we use. Uh, this illustration here, of course, is talking about having different languages, uh, which obviously is a problem. But even if we're speaking the same actual language, we can have different understandings of all the various terms, both process terms and our business terms. So we need to develop, actively think about and develop a capability to talk in a uniform way about the process work. So let's think about the sort of capabilities from a people point of view. Now, I'm not going to go through this in lots of detail because I think these things will be relatively obvious uh, for you. There's a body of knowledge that we need to develop and maintain and make accessible, of course. We need people to be able to use tools and techniques, the various things that we're doing to analyze, to set process KPIs, to collect data, uh, to improve processes. We need to understand all of those tools and techniques, and there'll be related methodologies as well. Some of that inevitably needs training, formal classroom training or online training. Some of it might be experiential. There's, nothing, there's no substitute, is there, for practical experience. You can go to the classroom and learn all, all you want to about a process improvement methodology, for example, but you really come to understand it when you get to apply it and, and, and you get the nuances and the, and the subtleties about the methodology. So no substitute for practical experience, and we should be trying to make sure that as many people as possible are exposed to that kind of learning pathway. And of course, we need to make BPM part of everyone's role because everyone's involved, everyone's executing processes. Many, many people have got ideas for improvement. Uh, they're the subject matter experts. So if we can incorporate process work and process thinking, conscious process thinking into people's uh, roles, then that's also going to be developing capabilities from a people perspective. Let's have a think about methods because we're going to have lots of methods and tools and techniques, aren't we? We're going to, we're, the whole process of process management and improvement, of course, is a process and it needs to be documented and managed and improved and 
measured, and all of the things we evangelize for everyone else's processes. And then we'll have a process architecture. And we don't want that just to be some static picture hanging on the wall or even a database of objects. It's got to be a management tool, pretty much a day-to-day -day operational management tool. So we've got to make sure that that's not only we can develop and maintain the process architecture, but we can make it available in useful ways. We need to be able to understand how we're going to create measures and measurement methods. And we're going to do surveys. OK, well, how do we do a survey? That sounds easy, but, you know, there's some, there's some technique uh, and, and, and knowledge required to do that effectively. If we'll, we'll have a process improvement methodology, preferably just one, so that we can build a universal capability in using that effectively. We will undoubtedly be producing process models, so we need, and lots of people will be doing that, so we need some modeling conventions so that everyone is doing it the same way and, and our models have the ability to work together. Some sort of way of contributing to a knowledge database, we need to control that. We don't want to go overboard and, and put need require lots and lots of time and effort into that, but, but we do need to have some kind of knowledge database that people can access and contribute to. And it's always going to be useful to have at least a glossary of terms, if not a concept model, both about the, the terms that we use in the process space, but also about those key terms, important terms we use in the organization, those business terms. And oftentimes when you're working in cross-functional processes, you'll uncover differences of understanding about even some of the most uh, basic terms of the business um, that have never quite been defined well, and people have made up their own understandings of it and that can lead to confusion. So lots of capabilities. How do we develop them? Well, again, I won't go through this in huge detail because I'm sure you can uh, you can work it out. Firstly, we will have to do some training. There'll be learning pathways of various sorts delivered in all sorts of different ways. Obviously, video uh, works in person, in classroom training, all sorts of ways of delivering that these days. And we can be quite inventive about how we how we do that. Just developing and maintaining artifacts as examples is going to be useful for people, including people actively including including people as many as possible in improvement projects, actually participating. I don't mean observers. Observer status in an improvement project is pretty pointless, I think. But to actually get in there and be part of the action is important. You can invite people to come to your organizations. That's easy to do these days. I do it a lot myself. People ask me to come in and, and sell them these days as it in person. But we can come in in an online uh, platform, of course, and speak, which makes it easier to do for everyone. Um, you can publish uh, your models and information, perhaps internally, but maybe even uh, publicly. Just visiting other organizations, find someone, probably not a competitor, but, but someone at a similar stage to you, maybe a little advanced so you can learn and, and have some visits and, and have them come to you. All of those things are possible. Lots and lots of people on the process journey and everyone is looking to get some insights into how other people do it. Attending conferences, webinars, there's a plethora of opportunities for that these days, isn't there? So we can all do that and not just attend, maybe think about presenting. It's nothing like presenting at these uh, places to actually refine and sharpen your understanding of what it is you're doing. You could run your own internal conference. If you're a large-ish organization, you've got plenty of material, plenty of people doing good process work. Well, turn, it in, turn them into conference presentations. Run a half day or a full day internal event. That would be terrific. And there's plenty of opportunities for you to publish your own case studies internally or externally if if you're able to do so. So all of those things, it's not just the publishing, of course, of a case study, it, it's the preparation of it, it's the discussion of it, perhaps the arguing of it, that, that, that sharing of understanding and, and building that kind of capability that's important as well. So lots of ways of developing capabilities, but of course, I think we need a plan. So I think of this as the capability development plan. It doesn't need to be terribly complicated or, or long. You can keep it quite uh, focused. Uh, <clears throat> you're simply saying these are the areas we would need to build capability in. This is where we're at. This is where we want to be in terms of capability. So what have we got to do to change that, to close that uh, that gap? And this is an <clears throat> active plan, a living document. You can develop it with lots of input from lots of people and, and uh, keep it up to date. Uh, understand what's working, what's not working, all of those good things. Uh, so we're not, it's not just a plan, it's the execution of a plan and testing the outcome. So how can we pull all this together? So we need a plan. None of these capabilities will develop magically by themselves, at least not to the extent that we need them to. It, keep it simple, practical, focused. Don't go overboard. We're not going to change the world in, in a week. Uh, we just need to work at the 
at the, the, the cadence that the organisation will, will allow. No one's got lots of spare time in your organisation, I'm sure. If you think it's useful, use the seven enablers as, as the way of, of, of dividing up the various kinds of capabilities that we might want. That, that might give you a, a, a nice in into defining the sorts of capabilities. Uh, if you've done a, a BPM maturity assessment with me, then you have already a roadmap, which is a great step towards that. And then the whole capability development plan has got to be reviewed regularly. Is it being effective? Is, is this particular sort of activity working? Should we change it? What's working well? Should we? Can we do more of what's working well? All of those kinds of things. We need to be testing that all the time so that we're getting good at, at that process as well. Uh, and, and as I'm often heard to say, you know, what we, what we don't want in our organisations is just five process analysts. We want 5,000. And by that I mean we want everyone in the organisation to be able to participate in some useful material way in process management and improvement. Uh, because that's the way we're going to get effective and sustained process-based management. And through that, we get to our holy grail of continuous organisational performance improvement. That's what we're trying to do here in our process work, and we need the capabilities, the continuously developing capabilities, to be sure we can do that. Thanks for joining me for this Process Insight. In this series, I'm discussing what I mean by process-based management and how I work with clients around the world to make it work in a sustained and real way in the real world. Practical approaches for real-life opportunities. More information about me and my work, my website. You might be interested in the Tregear BPM overview document that summarizes my approach. All the links are below. You have my contact details and I'd be delighted to connect. Thanks for sharing this time with me. If you'd like to continue the conversation, I'd love to hear from you.